All right, welcome to this edition of the Farrell Phelps Show, where my guest today is none other than Martina Dinkins. Martina, welcome to the show. Yes, yes, yes. Now, Martina and I go back a little bit, good friend of mine, and Martina has started a line of soap called Anitrum Handmade Soaps. Martina, I want you to tell us a little bit more about the soaps that we have here. Wow. Well, the soaps in, in, entails, um, they are really a, a, a master of my own design, I'm going to say that. Um, I really love the soaps. Today I brought um, pumpkin spice soap, which just happened to be uh, my favorite scent. Um, also, I brought um, an unscented bar of soap, which is a combination of different um, clays that's really, really good for your skin, nourishing. Okay, okay. Now, you say a combination of different clays. Clay isn't typically something that we would put on our face, is it? Uh, sometimes. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. So, what are some of the benefits of actually having clay in the soap? Okay. Well, the benefits is it'll make your skin very smooth. Um, if you have acne-prone skin, it can help you with that. Um, also, if you have oily skin, it'll actually help you with that as well. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, a part of what this show is all about is learning. And I always want to learn from whatever it is that I do. We want to educate, motivate, and inspire. Mm -hmm. uh, so when we talk about the element of just taking care of pores, agony, and things of that nature, mm -hmm. I think that's a great thing that you should have and that should stay in the soaps. Mm -hmm. Now, different people I've learned through talking to you at various times have sensitivity mm -hmm. to certain things. And so some of your soaps are unscented. Is that right? Right. Okay, because what happens if it's a person who gets irritated by something that's scented? Well, they get they can have an allergic reaction to it, um, maybe bumps, some type of breakout or things like that. But um, we want to make sure, I want to make sure that each bar is something that somebody else can use. Um, I also make uh, personalized soap. So if you have a particular type of soap that you would want, mm -hmm. I can make that as well. Okay, so mm -hmm. when you say a personalized soap, they can actually tell you what they want in that particular product exactly. and then you can make that product? Exactly. Really? Now, this is actually a customized soap. This is a goat's milk soap that was requested by a co-worker. Now she was, she was interested in having a um, activated charcoal soap with the benefits of goat milk which is again something that's very good for your skin. Okay. Decided to put some hemp seeds in it and it's actually really good for your face. Okay you said I'm sorry say it again it's really good for? Your face. For your face. Yes. And you mentioned hemp seed. Tell me a little bit about that. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I wanted something that was like um, uh, maybe a facial scrub, if, if that makes okay. makes more sense. And so I decided to use hemp seeds. Okay. So that gives it the texture right. that's needed to make it more like an exfoliant. Exactly. When you're actually using that soap. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I had the pleasure of, of, of trying a couple of these soaps. Uh, and one particular, why you got that look on your face? <laughs> one particular was coffee. I think it was, you had coffee granules in this particular soap. Right. What was the benefit of that particular soap when I tried The that? same thing. Um, you're looking into having um, a very good skin exfoliation. And um, it's, it, it doesn't help to be able to rejuvenate with a little coffee when I actually happen to drink it. Is that right? <laughs> right. Oh, okay. So, but, so you can drink it and you can soap it. <laughs> That's another way to look at it, okay? So it's multi multi purpose usage uh in, in other words. Um now I wanna uh, I always like to find out what makes people do what they do. You know, um and of course I know the backstory, but they don't know the backstory. What was it that got you excited about creating a product like this? You know what? Um I was dealing with some life experiences and um I am a giver, I love giving to people. Um, one of the things is that when I start giving to people, um, my aunt actually told me, hey, I would like to purchase that, mm -hmm. you know. And it became really exciting to be able to sell that. And then I started um, being able to mass produce it. However, the ones I was making at first was glycerin. Okay. So I no longer make it anymore. And what I okay. would like to do is have ultimate control over what I put in the product. And this is what we have here. Okay, okay. Now, when you say you stop using the glycerin, mm -hmm. and the re I want to go back. Mm -hmm. You said the reason why you started the soap was because of some personal things that you were dealing with. Right. Do you mind sharing a little bit about what that personal experience was? Well, I was dealing with some things with um, my brother. Um, he was, and I think for me, I needed a way to just channel things out. Mm -hmm. um, with the with the making of these soaps. They're going to make you have to have your total control over this, okay? okay? Because you wanted a certain look, mm -hmm. or you're looking for something in particular. Um, like I said, but these are different. The ones that I initially started making, mm -hmm. um, they were a pre-made soap, which okay. all the additives you would add on your own, whatever you wanted the, the, the soap to smell like, you would do that. Okay. But with these, is a little bit different. 
right. um, it requires sodium hydroxide, which is a caustic substance um, that is required to make any bar of soap. So if you're not concentrating on that, it would definitely um, give you second and third degree burns. Okay, so you got to really know what you're saying. It's like being a chemist yes. in a lot of ways. I'm going to go back just a little bit based on what you were sharing when you when you when you made a, the comment about uh, things that were going on with your family mm -hmm. and things that you couldn't control. Right. Uh, and I just want to make sure I understand. But with the soaps and you creating this product, this is something that you could control. Right. Exactly. Is that a good way to exactly. look at that? Exactly. Exactly. Okay. And so that was a one of the you know, and that's what's so important when we go through different trials and tribulations in life that we're able to take those lemons and turn them into lemonade in some form or fashion to make a difference in our lives. I don't think we experience or go through anything just for ourselves, but I think it's always designed to be a blessing to other people uh, once we get through that experience, whatever it is for us. Uh, and that was certainly one of those things for you. And I want to make sure we had clarity on that. Exactly. Uh, because it was through your trials and tribulations and, and things that you were going through mentally mm -hmm. that made you say, okay, this is what I'm going to do. Right. You know, and it kind of ignited that, 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 that flame in you. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a huge flame. Um, I was literally going to bed sleeping about what soap can I make today. Um, being, um, looking at the soaps and trying to imagine just how those soaps would turn out to be. Um, in some ways, um, I've the soaps that I didn't think was going to come out correct were one of the most beautiful bars of soap. And you know, and, that, and that, yeah, that, yeah. And a lot of times, you know, here's the deal. A lot of times when we're creating stuff, we don't know what it's going to come out. We don't know what that end result is going to be. It's kind of like baking a cake. Mm -hmm. You put all these ingredients in, and you hope that you get a beautiful cake that's very flavorful. Right. Uh, at the end of, of making a cake, it's no different for us creative people that are doing things. And like myself, being a photographer, you know, the end result, you know, is what we always look for to be excellent. And that's something that I've actually found in your soap. Uh, is a level of excellence, and I wouldn't be using it if it wasn't good. Huh. Now I wouldn't be using. It. I'm just telling y'all, if it wasn't good, I wouldn't, wouldn't be on my face. I'm just telling you. But uh, but it's really a great soap, and uh, I've had the opportunity to to uh, share it also with other people, and all I get is good, positive results mm -hmm. uh, from everybody. In fact, my brother-in-law today uh, was here at the studio, and he said, I want that soap. What was that soap that you gave me? I said, I, and I said to him, I said, I don't know if she can make that exact thing. I don't even remember which one it was. <laughs> but it was, it was one of your soaps, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but he said, I want to order it, you know, or whatever. I said, well, you know what, I'm going to see her tonight on the show, mm -hmm. and I'll make sure I tell her. So we got to figure out what it was, Okay. you know. I know it was good, because apparently it must have been good he wanted another one. <laughs> uh, uh, so, but yeah, this is this is an excellent product, and uh, we're going to be back in just a moment. You guys stick around. We'll be back in just a moment with more of Martina Dinkins. Stick around. <laughs> Tired of wasting time threading needles? What would you do with more time? Would you spend it with family? Grow your business? Take a class or travel? There's a remarkable new tool available to help make your dream for more time a reality. The Easy Needle Multi-Threader was designed for weavers, seamstresses, and quilters to thread multiple needles in a fraction of the time than traditional methods. It eliminates tangles and prevents the possibility of germs and bacteria due to fallen needles and threads onto the floor. It's efficient, it's innovative, it's a time saver. Increase your productivity with Easy Needle Multi-Threader today. Sky Trues Custom Eyewear has taken the world by storm. In only eight months, Sky Trues has gained the eyes of many, including celebs like Big Sean, Little Flip, Destiny Child, Soldier Boy, just to name a few. Through custom design, Sky Trues can put your imagination on your frames. I bring to you the next big thing in Houston, Sky Trues, created by Golden Boy, the musician, the artist, the entrepreneur, and grassroots marketing genius. Be inspired, Sky Trues, custom designed frames. Sky Trues! All right, welcome back to this edition of the Frail Phelps Show. As I told you before, my wonderful guest is Martina Dinkins. Welcome back, Martina. Yeah, yeah. You know, we were talking about your amazing soap. We talked about you had uh, the thing, that, the fact that you had gone through some personal things mm -hmm. that kind of got you to the place where you wanted to create something, mm -hmm. uh, something that you could actually control. Now, I want to ask you, what is the future for Anitrum soaps? Wow, great question. Um, my future literally is to 
start a line. You know, if it's a possibility to um, to go beyond just soaps. Um, I see people making bath bombs. Those are really popular. Um, body butters and things like that. So um, I want that to be an extension of the soaps that I actually make. Okay. Now, when you say bath bombs, for somebody that just really don't know like me, what is a bath bomb? <laughs> Pretty much what it is. And it's okay. literally um, a moisturizing product that you drop in the tub and it just, explodes. Yes. A huge explosion. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> but they have a lot of um, shea butters and things like that in the soap. Some people, I've seen a bad bun where someone, um, they were in just want to get engaged or just propose. And they and, want a bath bun. Uh, oh, they had a, a, a special made bath bun with a ring in it. Oh, that's mm -hmm. pretty cool. Hope it didn't go down the sink. It didn't. It didn't? Oh, okay. That would have bombed out the situation. <laughs> 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 but uh, that's interesting. Yeah. That's interesting. So I would like to experiment with the bath bun. Oh, you'll be the first to know. No, uh, no, no. I mean, do some other people first and then let me try after that. <laughs> I want to make sure it's... it's Tested and true and try, oh. <laughs> try tested and true for, for yeah. getting my bath up. But, uh, <laughs> but I really would like to experience yeah. that because I know that you create a, a quality product. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I know that you're, you're doing some other things too. You're, 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 something's about to happen for you. You're about to expose this a little bit more. That's another op opportunity for you, right? Absolutely, absolutely. As of right now, um, I will be a vendor, excuse me. Um, I will be a sponsor for um, Iman and I am Iman, I'm sorry, and that will be in Dallas on the, I'm going to say December, <laughs> March the 4th. So um, it's another degree of exposure um, along with um, I Belong magazine as well. So I really right. like that. Wow. Yeah. That is really fantastic, you know, and, and I get excited about it mm -hmm. because I, I've known you for a period of time uh, before you began to make the soaps mm -hmm. and to see you um, making the soaps now and to see where it's going is really a beautiful thing because I saw it when you started, yeah. you know, and I've listened to you on the phone multiple times uh, being frustrated with different formulas that you couldn't quite get right <laughs> and uh, of course I would always as a friend be there to encourage you and tell you you're going to get it right, it's going to come together, it's going to be excellent mm -hmm. and uh, to see that you fine-tuned this product now uh, is certainly something to commend. And I think that you were going to perhaps maybe bless a few folk tonight too, huh? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So for each. Hallelujah. <laughs> so for you get a soap and you get a soap and you get a soap. You guys will definitely be getting a personal sample um, of the bars of soap that I make. Um, personally, my favorite scent is um, pumpkin spice. Pumpkin spice. You keep going back to the pumpkin smi it, spice. spice. Isn't that yeah. like holiday-ish? It, it is, but it's my favorite. So I love it, and I wanted to share that with everybody else. Oh, wow. So they're going to get you. a little taste of pumpkin spice. Exactly. So everybody's going to be walking around here smelling like pumpkin spice. If you want to. <laughs> <laughs> yes or not, but they will be clean if nothing else. Huh? Yeah. And fresh. <laughs> yes, they will. Fresh and clean fresh. is important. <laughs> That's why I use it every day. <laughs> um, and I actually have three bars of it, like, lined up, okay, I want this one today, I want that one, you know, so I can have different freshness every day. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you got one, you got one that's called, uh, uh, seaweed, uh, or something with, is it seaweed or? Dead sea mud. Dead sea mud. Now, you scared me, I ain't gonna, you, you scared me. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know if I'd put no dead sea mud on my face now, you know, that, that, uh, but, uh. But tell me some of the, the qualities and benefits of having that particular uh, element in the soap. Wow. Um, Dead Sea Mud actually has always been a go-to product for anybody when you cut, when it relates to a spa. Okay. If you're um, rejuvenated with it with a Dead Sea Mud soap facial and um, different bad products, including Dead Sea Salt, which it does smell bad, mm. but the benefits are really good. Okay. Um, I don't know if you've ever been to a spa where you got the Dead Sea Mud clay mask mm -hmm. on your face. Now, they may be able to hide some of the scent, but um, when I initially started using it, the scent was grotesque. Okay. But um, I was able to minimize that, so it's a very, very good bar of soap. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. And you know, it's, it's kind of like everything that, that, that sometimes we like stuff or we don't like it, and sometimes the things that we don't like is the best thing for us. Right. Like, you might have a cold and you need to take some cough syrup, but you hate taking cough syrup. Mm -hmm. But you know it's the best thing for you. I guess that same thing is applicable when we talk about the seaweed soap or the sea, dead seaweed. Dead sea mud. Dead sea mud <laughs> soap. Um, but uh, I want to try that too. Okay. okay. I want to try, try everything. I just want to try all of it. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like a kid in the candy store. You know what I'm saying? I want that one, that one, that one, that one. That one. Uh, but the soaps, again, are really, really good. Martina, um, you're doing a great job. 
and uh, tell me what, what else is going on. Any other dreams or visions that you have for this particular project? product? I know you want to do the bone. Mm -hmm. And uh, what else would you like to do? Well, body butters. I think um, for the most part what I would like to do is actually create um, a set. And so that set mm. would include um, soaps, the uh, the bath bomb, and the body butters. So okay. that, that's kind of, that's in a foreseeable future right now. Really? Right. A foreseeable future? That's great, man. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I can't tell you, I'm really, really proud of you. I think you're doing a wonderful job. Okay. Uh, I certainly want to tell you to keep pushing forward. And you know I'm behind you 100%. Correct. You know that, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. I'm, I'm one of your biggest fans, you know. Uh, and I don't just talk about it, but I be about it. And uh, I definitely share these soaps with, with many, many people, every opportunity that I get. Now, Martina, I want, uh, before we leave, how will the listening audience get in touch with you, or how can they find you, if you can let us know that? Well, right now, you can you can find me on um, Instagram, Anitrum Handmade Soaps. And um, at this point, I'll be updating uh, Anitrum Handmade Soaps on Instagram uh, with an <coughs> Epsi shop, um, Epsi shop, I'm sorry, location and um, I'll be posting everything there. I also have my personal page um, that also includes soaps and you can reach that at Martina Dinkins. Again, if you're interested in any of these products, um, you can DM me on Instagram and I'll uh, give you further information. Oh, fantastic. And we'll have it listed right here at the bottom of our screen also uh, for our viewing audience to get that information from you as well. Martina, thank you so much for joining me on this edition of the Farrell Phelps Show. And you guys stick around. My next guest is none other than Houston's own Mr. Sean McLemore, gospel artist uh, right here in H-Town. So you guys stick around as we hear his testimony and his story. We'll be back in just a moment. a lot of valuable time in their stylist chair, creating and maintaining a polished image. Having been in the beauty industry for over 35 years, I have witnessed this investment firsthand. Hi, my name is Elizabeth Jackson and I'm the owner of Interactive Hair Studio. I love doing hair, I love uh, being creative, I love um, giving someone options. Through the years, I began to notice how much time was being spent threading needles during the weaving process. In salons everywhere, clients were threading needles for their stylists to save time instead of relaxing and enjoying the experience. We had to use towels and sometimes mannequin heads or oftentimes your own clothes where you, you thread a lot of needles and you just have them ready so you can move faster. I knew that this was not the kind of experience that I wanted to provide for my clients, so I created a better way. The Easy Needle Multi-Threader is designed to make the weave installation process faster and easier, all in five simple steps. All you have to do is secure the Easy Needle Multi-Threader to a surface, insert the cushions into the unit, slide the needles into the cushions, place your thread onto the dowel, and thread your needles with the Easy Needle Threader. Stylists who use this product will never have to thread another needle in between weaving again. With the Easy Needle Multi-Threader, they can save time, save money, increase their clientele, and provide a wonderful experience for their clients. Alright, welcome back to this edition of the Farrell Phelps Show. As I told you before, my next guest would be none other than Houston's own Mr. Sean McLemore. Welcome to the show, Sean. Thank you, man. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, it's always a pleasure having you on, brother. You're my brother, man. Yeah, yeah it's I'm always sure. a pleasure. I'm always glad to be here. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Now, a lot of things have gone on in the life of Sean McLemore. Yeah. You know? Um, and I know a little bit of it. And of course, by me being, uh, I won't say necessarily a part of the gospel industry, but the fact that I have a lot of clients that are in the gospel industry. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I've heard different things lately. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, um, that, that concerned me. And uh, needless to say, time I hear it, I pray for you. Appreciate it. Just like I did the first time, I, I pray for you. Uh, because I know a lot of things are going on. Now, some people don't know, uh, this is a little known fact about Sean McLemore. Mm -hmm. We're going to go back a little bit. Uh, the movie 
that you did. Uh, I know that just make you laugh every time yeah. you think about it, right? Uh, but I think you guys remember the movie. But uh, one of the first movies about the the Bloods and the Crips and all that Colors, stuff. Yeah. The movie Colors uh, back in the day. Uh, and Sean was actually in that film. Mm. And uh, yeah, oh, man, man, Sean was in that film, and Sean's done a lot of things since that time. Of course, that was when you lived in was that when Los you lived, lived in Los Angeles. Yeah. Uh, of course, you, you've come from Los Angeles to Houston, Texas, Absolutely. and you've been here for a period of time now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and you're known for your gospel music. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I just want to go back. What's some of the things as a as a gospel artist? What inspired you to even do gospel music? First of all, well, I was actually a <coughs> musician playing drums. In church, you know, I, I was uh, <laughs> grew up in Compton, California, so I was gang banging at the same time and okay. you know selling dope and stuff like that at the same time. Not ashamed to say it because okay. God delivered me from that. Right, you know, so um, was dealing with being a musician and going to church every Sunday mm -hmm. and gang banging from Monday through Saturday. Really? You know, my mom and my dad were ministers of music of the church. Okay. And it didn't matter. Um, uh, my dad had a drug problem. Okay. Every Sunday he would drag me to church. You know, he'd get up okay. and yeah, he'd drag me to church. It didn't matter. In spite of the he drug spite, problem? No, no drug problem. He drugged me to oh, church. Oh, drug. Now I'm thinking about it. That's definitely a feral feral joke. Yeah, well, You're saying drugs. I'm thinking yeah. about, you know, he's snorting yeah. some stuff, doing yeah. something. Yeah, the problem with But he drugged him to church. Him to church. Okay, yeah, I got so you, brother. It didn't matter what I did through Monday through Saturday. <laughs> he drugged me out that bed. Uh -huh. and he said, you got to go to Sunday school. Like, Sunday school? Yeah. He said, yeah. I said, so I went to Sunday school, and God had started at that point in time okay. instilling things in me that I didn't even see okay. or that I didn't okay. even know that was going to help me down the road. All right. So, um, you know, just being a part of the California scene, the, the, the lifestyle, and then playing drums on a Sunday. Okay. And then um, uh, I could <coughs> always sing, but I didn't really, you know, Exploit that around all of my crib friends. Yeah, because you, know you were too cool for it. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't do it. So, um, uh, I was asked in high school to sing uh, the national anthem for our homecoming. Okay. And I'm like, ah. Uh. And so I ended <laughs> up doing it, and lo and behold, the guys that I hung around and that you know were my peers, they ended up giving me like this super respect. Okay. You know, and it was like, you know, my name back then was Big Mac. You know. All right, like, Big Mac, yeah, like like McDonald's Big yeah, Mac. Yeah, Big all Mac, right. cause you shouldn't be gang banging, man. You just be a singer. Right. You know all of that. So mm -hmm. I just started uh, moving towards certain things in that area and in that field. And then my mom said, well, let me get you into acting. And okay. So she started getting uh, uh, agencies looking at me. And my uh, first agent was Jim Bridges, was Todd Bridges' dad. Okay. Tom Bridges was the guy on different strokes and it was his dad, he was my first agent and so I started booking engagements and commercials and things like that so you know uh, it was always in my family the entertainment part and then being a okay. part of Los Angeles you know entertainment capital city of the world. Yeah you know, definitely. Like the situation. So uh, I began to like it and I just took hold to it and God started blessing from that point on man. Right, and the rest is history, as they say. Yeah, he started blessing. Now, how did you end up in Houston, Texas, of all places, well, by way of L.A.? Um, <clears throat> I would say like four years in August, a friend of mine, named Pastor Chris Wright, he would hold a youth revival. Okay. And uh, he would ask me to come and be the soloist for youth revival. And I said, man, I like Houston. Okay. You know, it was it was nice. The people were nice. You know, everybody, you can drive down the street and they'll say, hey, you know, hey. You know, it's like... Right. Very cordial people, man, and so um, I just love the city, and so I said, one day I'm going to move to Houston. Okay. And we were doing a play, and the play ended up in Meridian, Mississippi. We was doing Mama, I'm Sorry. Mama, I'm yeah, Sorry. I remember Mama that. Moore. I yeah, remember that, yeah. Uh, I was on that show, and uh, it was a Michael Matthews production, uh -huh. and the show was over, and we ended up in Meridian, Mississippi, which they don't have big airports there, so okay. everybody had to be shipped and dispersed to different major cities to fly. Okay. So I came to Houston, and me and my best friend was like, man, let's stay. Okay. And just I like said, that? Just like that. And Thomas Miles, nephew Tommy. Uh -huh. I know Tom's a good friend of mine, and he's from Houston. And he mm -hmm. was like, "Mac, if you stay, man, I just put you up, man. We ain't really gonna do that." So, yeah. Uh, I stayed, man, and I've been in Houston for 23 years. Wow, 23 yeah. years. All right. Eight brothers and sisters, and I'm the only one that left 
Left home. Left yeah. home. Left uh, work good for L.A. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Yeah. Well, a lot of good things happened for you once you got to H-Town. Absolutely. Uh, so we talked about your acting, mm -hmm. but the music kind of took off and you began to do some things. Right. Uh, musically, and you had right. several albums that came out and things right. of this nature. Uh, and I know one of them that was really popular was one with two other fellas. Right. James uh, Fortune. James Fortune and Zicardi Cortez, Cortez, the song called I Believe. Absolutely. And uh, I listened to that earlier today, just to get really? myself in this, you know, get myself ready for yeah, Sean Mack. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? After yeah, this guy on to put that on. Great song, man. It stayed on the <coughs> charts for um, seven months, twelve mm -hmm. months, number one. Number one. Yeah, yeah I remember and, that. Uh, it was it was on Billboard, real strong, and uh, something that that I was a part of, that I was glad and uh, blessed to be a part of. I had just came out of having my first heart attack. Okay. And uh, a week after that. Uh, we had the doctor released me. He said you could fly. I said I could fly. He said you can fly. And we got there. So we went to Bobby Jones Gospel in Nashville mm -hmm. and did the song live. <coughs> okay. And uh, it blessed thousands of people, man. It, it really did. Of people. It really and, uh, did. It was just the type of song that really helped me back on my feet at that yeah. time. You know, so. Yeah. Yeah. And you know how you you talk about you had had that first heart attack. Of course, mm -hmm. we're going to talk about that a little bit more mm -hmm. in just a minute. But I remember when you had the first heart attack mm -hmm. because I was here at the studio with your manager mm -hmm. at the time. And we were getting ready to shoot. And he said, I got to go to, man, Sean just had a, had a heart attack. Sean had a heart attack. And he jetted out of here. Mm -hmm. And I began to pray for you right then. Mm -hmm. uh, sure. When that happened, I began to pray for you right then. Uh, so I remember that very distinctly. Yeah. Um, and uh, I know at one point we thought we were going to lose you. Yeah, well, I the doctors did. had said that this yeah, is over. this is it. Yeah, he's not going to survive this. Right. Yeah, my heart rate was at 198 beats per minute, and uh, <coughs> the doctors came in and they uh, they shot me four times. Uh, the third time they shot me, it was over. Mm -hmm. Came out of the room and they were taking their garments off and you know let's call it. In yeah. fact. Um, you know, I have the paperwork where they call the time on my life. Mm -hmm. And so there was another physician that wasn't even appointed to my case. Right. And he said, let's go back in mm -hmm. and we need to shock him one more time. Right. And said, uh, he told me this the next day. He said, there were so many people in the lobby. Praying for uh, you. What? We, don't, we don't know, well, who are you? Are you a celebrity or what are <coughs> mm -hmm. you? And you know, so I, I'm like, you know, I'm, I don't get into all this. I said, I just... A, a person that need to live right now, you need to do something. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Save basically, me. Um, you know, I was out of it, you know, and he came in and he ordered all the other doctors and physicians to come in. It was eight people working on me. And so he came in and uh, they shocked me one more time. And uh, when they shocked me again, I'm, I'm sitting here having an interview with you. Ain't that some? Hallelujah! <laughs> And I, I remember your your wife was very instrumental in that too. I remember Absolutely. she was like, "No, y'all keep on." Yeah, she didn't. She didn't know. She didn't know. I I drove myself to the hospital. I, I remember she that. She didn't know, so they was asking, "Where's your wife?" I said, "I don't know." And so they somehow a nurse came in and, and they said, "Sean, is that you?" And I'm panting like a dog. She said, "Where's Rhonda?" I said, "She's at home." And she had my wife's number and gave it to the doctor. Okay. And she came up and as she came in the room, she had this little bottle of oil. And she start putting oil on the doctors, start mm -hmm. praying, start putting oil on me. There's power in the oil. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And so oh, she, yeah. She was very instrumental to that. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Absolutely. And you are here with us today. Yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah he, he right here with us. Yeah, are you right here? Yeah, yeah. And then on the last time you were on the show, man, you were getting ready for the stage play, uh, the Gerald Levert. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. Baby Hold On To Me. Baby Hold On To Me stage right. play. Right. Uh, with sure. Monifa and Allison right. Williams, I believe it was. Mm -hmm. uh, and Bruh Man from Martin. Right. Uh, everybody was here on the set that day. Mm -hmm. And we had a, dad. Gerald's dad. Yeah, yes. we had a wonderful time uh, here on the set. And that was the last time you were here. And again, so many things have happened since that. Right. Uh, now, you got a book now. Right. Uh, and it's called My Testimony, The Ministry, The Minstrel, The Marriage. Mm -hmm. Sean... Mac Lamore. I want to hear a little bit about the ministry side, the minister side. Mm -hmm. And I know that you've had some issues with church. Absolutely. And, you know, I know we believe in keeping it 100. 150. And uh, you know what? We're going to find out about that 150 in just a moment when we come back with more of Sean Mac Lamore. You guys stick around. We'll be back in just a moment.
truth. Sky Truths Custom Eyewear has taken the world by storm. In only eight months, Sky Truths has gained the eyes of many, including celebs like Big Sean, Little Flip, Destiny Child, Soldier Boy, just to name a few. Through custom design, Sky Truths can put your imagination on your frames. I bring to you the next big thing in Houston, Sky Truths, created by Golden Boy, the musician, the artist, the entrepreneur, and grassroots marketing genius. Be inspired, Sky Truths, custom designed frames. Sky Truths! Tired of wasting time threading needles? What would you do with more time? Would you spend it with family? Grow your business? Take a class or travel? There's a remarkable new tool available to help make your dream for more time a reality. The Easy Needle Multi-Threader was designed for weavers, seamstresses, and quilters to thread multiple needles in a fraction of the time than traditional methods. It eliminates tangles and prevents the possibility of germs and bacteria due to fallen needles and threads onto the floor. It's efficient, it's innovative, it's a time saver. Increase your productivity with Easy Needle Multi-Threader today. edition of the Feral Felt Show with my wonderful guest, Mr. Sean McLemore. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. Listen, 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 listen. This is all about you, man. This is all about you. When we left off, we were talking about Sean's latest book, My Testimony. The Minister, The Minstrel, The Marriage. Let's talk a little bit about the minister, Sean McLemore. Tim, what, what do you see in today's church? that you might have concerns about Mr. McLemore? Oh man, that's that's an awesome question. Um, in fact, it takes me back to my next book that I'm ready, that I'm beginning to write. It's okay. called The Beauty of Authenticity. Okay. And uh, it's basically um, getting back to, uh, we've lost the real authenticity of the church. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's like church used to be well respected. Mm -hmm. You know, it just used to be, you know, that thing where you can walk into and you can feel like that there's a safe haven there. Right. You know, nowadays it's uh, some churches, not all churches, might I say, some churches are kind of watered down okay. because at the end of the day, uh, uh, it's about the pastor, not God. Mm. You know, mm -hmm. It becomes about the pastor and not God, and, and, and that's a problem. But when we focus on getting back to the real uh, authentic church, okay, is where God is beginning to be relevant in people's lives. When you, me as a praise and worship leader, I would, I, I love to get up and do praise and worship and have the people thinking about God and not me when I sit down. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So uh, uh, we have to look at it like church is not a platform. It's not a stage for us. Mm -hmm. But Absolutely. It's, it's a place where where God can say, okay, I'm going to use you mm -hmm. so folks can get to me. But you have to understand that it doesn't just stop with you. And some people, you know, get into that mind frame where, you know, okay, this is my platform. This is my stage, you know. Uh, and that's where it stops. Okay. You know, so the authenticity, it's like your your own authentic self. Right. Me getting back to my own authentic self brings me happiness. Mm -hmm. Because now I'm back to the place that God created me to be. Gotcha. And the purpose that God has given me is to be the authentic person 
where he could say, okay, I want to give you this, I want to give you this, I want to pour into you right here, is because your authenticity is open now okay. to the point to where I made him, I put him in this spot. But when we come to that point to say, okay, it's not about me, but it's about God, uh, then he can begin to do things for us in our lives mm -hmm. so that he can get the glory at the end of the day. Amen. Okay. Amen. okay. Yeah. And, and that's really what it's all about when it's yeah. all said and done. Yeah. Uh, and being a praise and worship leader, you have a great level of responsibility. Absolutely. Uh, to the flock, wherever you are, mm -hmm. you have a responsibility to that flock. I do feel like in some ways the church has become a show. Absolutely. Uh, in some ways, uh, and I think that's something that we need to be cognizant of as parishioners, mm -hmm. wherever we are, mm -hmm. and we're there for a word. Mm -hmm. And I think also the church has been marred by so many things that have taken place in the churches right. negatively right. Uh, that we hear about or that we see on the news. Or if we see a minister of music that has abused his wife, or if we see all these different things that are going on within the realms of the church, it makes it a little bit harder for us to have the level of respect that we should have for those that are worship, that are, are worship leaders in the body of Christ. So uh, a lot of times, you know, and I'll speak from my own personal self, my own experience or whatever, after knowing so much about people that are in the gospel industry, I have been kind of turned off, mm -hmm. to be honest with you, mm -hmm. uh, even when it comes to the church situation, mm -hmm. you know, from going to church. Sometimes I wish I didn't know what I knew. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, mm -hmm. I get it. You know, being... I mean, being, I'm just being honest. But it's funny you say that because... Um, <coughs> We've being, had the conversation. Yeah, being, being hired as minister of music for different churches, you know, and, and going in, as I've gotten older, I begin to understand what's going on, you know, and, and what the deal is. I've had so many conversations with with pastors that would just blow me out of the water, you mm -hmm. know, just because they feel like, okay, this is my church, this is mine, okay. so don't touch that. Mm -hmm. I know you say, but don't leave that alone, that's mine. Okay. That type of stuff. Yeah. You know, so it's like, you know, um, now I understand. First you have to, what's in this book is understand who you stand under. Mm. Okay. My, my, my. Once you understand yes, yes. who you stand <clears throat> under, mm. then you then can become that person to say, okay, is this for me? Is this is what is this what God called me to do? Mm -hmm. Is this where He called me to serve? It's like Jesus with the disciples. It's uh, He created relationship with them. Mm -hmm. So once you create relationship, then if God tells you as the pastor, and I'm working under you, right? And we've created relationship before we sign business. Okay. If you say, okay, Matt, because we're good. Mm -hmm. And we created that relationship. Man, God is calling me to do some other things, and I don't think you're in this plan. Okay. We can still go to Papa Do's and eat because we created relationship. Right. Because now I understand who I stand under mm -hmm. in the first place. Right. And we created that whole relationship. That's what God did to do with something, did with disciples. Mm -hmm. He created relationship with them. And that's the so, foundation. Yeah, so when he to had to cut them. loose or move around, even he treated them incredible even his death was separation for them mm -hmm. they couldn't deal with it they couldn't understand it but he created that much relationship to where they believed he was coming back again all right all right all right Can I yeah. now the minstrel mm -hmm. the minstrel okay i'm gonna be honest with y'all i know a lot of words Definitions and all that. <laughs> but I'm going to get my thesaurus and wealth to that for menstrual. But, but right now, Sean going to tell me what menstrual is all about. Talk to me, Sean. Well, the minstrel is, is basically the minister of music. Mm -hmm. You know, the minister is the preacher part. Okay. Which I've been doing that for over 15 years. God called me to preach. And, mm -hmm. You know, so the, minist the minstrel is... The minstrel that takes care of all of the music of the church. Okay. Praise and worship leader, uh, uh, minister of music guy, you know, that type of thing. So that's what that stands for okay. in this instance of the book. Okay. So it's the uh, minister, the minstrel, the marriage. So the minstrel gets the music together, 
creates the whole curriculum for the church musically. Okay. Right. You know, so um, that's kind of what that is. And that's where I've had most of my down heartaches and issues and all of that foolishness. Okay. Being that because being the minister. I've dealt with pastors that will sit you down and hire you for your gift and then fire you because of your gift. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whoa, wait a minute. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Just keep it in one Now you said hire three. you for your gift. And then fire you because of your gift. And then fire you because of your gift. Mm -hmm. Now that's very interesting. Mm -hmm. That's very interesting. Hire you for your gift, but fire you for well, your gift. Well, we need Farrell Phelps, Phelps to come in and be over our media. And I okay. want him to make sure that every instance of the media is covered like a newscast. Got you. But we already have some of these guys. Uh -huh. So professionalism exposes mediocrity. Mm. Mm. So when you, right. come in, when you come in yeah. and you do what <laughs> Farrell Phelps does <laughs> in a major way, mm -hmm. the folks start hating, mm -hmm. start tripping, mm -hmm. wow. start messing around and talking crazy about your gift. Mm -hmm. You know, you taking my shine. Right. Mm. Yeah, all of that. Yeah. Been there. Yeah. And that's because they ain't understood who they were under. under we going back to being under. Well, we're going to talk a little bit more about being yeah. under in just a moment. You guys stick around. We'll be back in just a moment with more of Sean McLemore. Yeah. Tired of wasting time threading needles? What would you do with more time? Would you spend it with family? Grow your business? Take a class or travel? There's a remarkable new tool available to help make your dream for more time a reality. The Easy Needle Multi-Threader was designed for weavers, seamstresses, and quilters to thread multiple needles in a fraction of the time than traditional methods. It eliminates tangles and prevents the possibility of germs and bacteria due to fallen needles and threads onto the floor. It's efficient, it's innovative, it's a time saver. Increase your productivity with Easy Needle Multi-Threader today. This edition of the Feral Film Show with my guest Sean McLemore. Welcome back, Sean. I was saying it during our break. One of the things that I really appreciate about Sean is that Sean always keeps it real, keeps it 100. As, as the cool folks say, 100. Oh, uh, and just tell it like it is, and I always appreciate that about you. And that's what we were doing when we left off, keeping it 100 mm -hmm. as it relates to church. Absolutely. You know, and the things that we see and experience in church, um, the detractors, and the mm -hmm. things that also draw us to church. Uh, the third part of the books is it says the marriage. Mm -hmm. Explain the marriage as it relates to. Well, a lot of people get that mixed up with the marriage being husband and wife marriage. Yeah, husband and wife deal. But it's the uh, the minister, the minister of the marriage. How do we marry <coughs> the two that together? Those two together versus uh, uh, preparing preparing for the wedding and not the marriage. Mm -hmm. Mm. You know, so basically preparing for the wedding is sitting down, making the deal happen, but when the ring is finally put on the finger and you got the date set and this is the time that we're going to get married, but we forget about the marriage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then that's when things go, you know, just go loose, you know, okay. and uh, all hell can break loose, you know, right there in the church. Within the because confines of the... How, so how do you marry the gift of... of the minister of music who has a gift to the pastor's vision, who can also sing, mm -hmm. who can also preach, mm -hmm. who, who also mm -hmm. has major influence. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, mm -hmm. first thing, one, uh, some of the things that I've run across is the people that they hire already have some sense of influence. Okay. So they would always, some of them would probably always have in the back of their minds you know, once they get you involved, it's like, man, this this guy, this girl, they can really, uh, they really bringing it in this church. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> what happens if the preacher, minister of music decides to start his own church? Mm -hmm. Okay. Will he take some of my folks? 
Mm -hmm. You know, so it's a lot that goes on dealing with the ministry. But my thing and what I've been trying to get across for a while, and I want to have some uh, some sessions about it with just ministers and music and pastors. Okay. How do we marry the visions? Mm -hmm. How do we marry this so that we could be edifying together? Yeah. You know, we're better together. Mm -hmm. And know? that's what it's about. It's, yeah. a, it's yeah. about the yeah. unity. Mm -hmm. When yeah. you talk about, again, the body. The yeah. body of Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, in order to make the body work, it takes the hand, it takes the arm, it takes the legs, it takes right. the feet. All of these are components of what make That's that true. body functional. Right. But when you have dysfunction in the body, mm -hmm. you cause it to limp. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Something is going on that causes it to limp. Something's going on that causes it to fail. Something's going on that causes folk to leave the church that they all loved before. Mm -hmm. You have to take a look at the foundation and what's taking place. And I think it can be better understood mm -hmm. when we, again, understand who we stand under, under mm -hmm. and keep that as our focus. But when we get into self, Absolutely. that's when we have problems. That's when we have situations that cause folk to leave church mm -hmm. or to cause folk to be turned off by the church mm -hmm. uh, uh, and things of that nature. Sean, before we finish this interview, I want to go back to... Now, since you were, since you left here the last time, and we talked about the book, you have lost a substantial amount of weight, brother. I gotta say it, this man that lost weight, I'm almost hating on him, and I'm trying not to, because I got about 15 good pounds to get off, and he done lost about 100 and something. Come on now, tell, tell, tell us, tell us about how you did it, man. I mean, uh, you know, you just you just have to come to a point in time in your life where where you stick to um, what you say you don't do. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Keeping your word to yourself. Just keeping your word to yourself and keeping it real. I didn't have a New Year's resolution mm -hmm. because I fail at them all the time. Me too. So I just, uh, I put in my spirit that I just wanted to reset. Okay. So that was my deal, was to reset. And when you reset, you lose some things. Mm -hmm. You lose some stuff. Mm -hmm. And it can be the stuff that's not conducive to the growth. Of where you're trying to go. All right. So what I did, I told God, I said, look, I want to do reset. I don't want to lose everything, mm -hmm. but I want to lose some stuff that's not going to help me get to where I need to be. Okay. He said, okay, if you're going to take that, then let me just do a hard reset then. Mm. And once he did that hard reset, it reset my mind, it reset my focus, wow. and mm. everything. So I began to hit that gym. You know, I wasn't going to let a chicken, fried chicken wing take me out. Right. <laughs> Come on now. So I just, you know, not to say that's not good. I'm a cheat day. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I'm consistent okay. at what I do. So if I'm working out, I'm consistent. If I'm eating right, I'm consistent. And that's one of the major things that we have issues with is being consistent. Mm -hmm. Oh, consistency you know? across and the board is a challenge a for thing. most of us. Yeah, yeah, but it's, you know, it's a it's a learning process, mm -hmm. you know, right. to be consistent. And anything that you do uh, with the consistency, uh, you can see uh, Change. developing results from mm -hmm. it. You know what I'm Absolutely. saying? So I uh, lost nearly 53 pounds. <laughs> Okay. You know, wow. So I feel like a totally different person. Wow. 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 So I've seen uh, that sick side of me, that sick guy, yeah, stay in the hospital, yeah, and the healthy guy came out. Come on, now that's a good way to say it. That, 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 that's awesome. That's awesome. Now, now, then what happened this 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 second time around? Because we had we gonna go back. We had the heart attack a few years ago. Mm -hmm. But the most recent situation that you experienced, you were actually performing. Yeah, man. And that's kind of what kickstarted this. Is that right. correct? Well, actually, um, <clears throat> from the first heart attack, they put a device in me, which is a defibrillator. So that's in me, you know, better than need it and not have it than have it and not need it. Right. You know, so <laughs> I didn't want it. My <laughs> wife made me do it. So it's cool. I got it, and I'm glad I did. Okay. Uh, I was up singing. Um, I was doing a performance. Um, Somewhere and, we, and I was doing some Gerald Avert music. They was doing a, um, a throwback night, mm -hmm. and so I did some Gerald Avert songs, and I couldn't get through the first song, and then it went off on me. Just randomly shot went me off, like and shot them. five times at night. And the first time it hit me, I thought it was the microphone, the frequencies from the microphone or something. Maybe it was too close or something. Never happened before. Mm -hmm. All I heard was stories was it's gonna feel like. A horse kicking you in the chest, and wow. so it hit me, hit me hard. Boom! I dropped the mic. I 
dropped the mic, the uh, sound guy came up and he gave me the mic again. And I was just dazzled. I couldn't figure out what it was. Mm -hmm. And so I picked it up again and started singing again and it hit me again. Bam! Like, mm. what's going on? And that's like a shock going through your Man, body, right? it's a shock, but it's it's a defibrillator. It's mm -hmm. the thing that they put on your chest. Oh, the pump. Yeah, yeah, to bring you that, back. That's yeah. in you. So I ran off stage as I was running off stage. My wife got behind me. She was like, something not right when she saw me. Mm -hmm. I never run off stage in the middle of a song. Yes. Yeah. Strange. So when I did, I was on my way off stage and it hit me again. And so she said that the defibrillator must be going off. So I grabbed and held her sitting in the chair and it hit me again like five times. It hit me that night. Yeah. And then um, I dealt with it and, you know, got myself together, you know, took some deep breaths, the paramedics came, they did what they did. Mm -hmm. And Sunday, from that Monday, that Sunday I was in church singing and it went off again. Mm -hmm. And it wow. hit me four times in church. Wow. And so uh, what happened was they had the frequency in the defibrillator set too low mm -hmm. versus giving it enough room and enough space to where if I was working out on my heart rate. It could sustain it, it would be okay. It could sustain it, it was at 110 beats per minute earlier. So when they mm -hmm. found out what was, happening, what was happening, they set it to 180 beats per minute. So it gave it enough room so that okay. if my heart is racing or whatever. You got some leeway. Yeah, but I should have I should have got them though. Yeah, you should have got them. Because they almost got you. Yeah, 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 that, yeah that, that, that could have been a malfunction. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 We all would have been on a cruise ship. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. So, so, you remember yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, that was the last um, last episode, last experience. So mm -hmm. that's why I say, you know, being being you know, being cognizant of what your body is telling you is very important. Absolutely. You know what I'm Listening I'm, to your body. I'm 50 years old, so I got to, you know, really understand. You know, I used to, I used to hear my daddy say certain things. You know, mm -hmm. and now just now keep I'm on living and all that. Yeah. yeah. So now I'm experiencing some things. So, you know, God is good. I'm here. I feel good. You know, okay. And uh, that's what it is. It is what it is. Well, we glad you're here, man. Yeah. 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 You got uh, some other things coming up you got to do. Yeah, man. So there's a reason that you're here. We're going to find out a little bit more about what Sean's about to do. When we come back, you guys stick around for more of the Farrell Phelps Show. We'll be back in just a moment. Yeah, Sky Trues! Sky Trues! Custom eyewear has taken the world by storm. In only eight months, Sky Trues has gained the eyes of many, including celebs like Big Sean, Little Flip, Destiny Child, Soldier Boy, just to name a few. Through custom design, Sky Trues can put your imagination on your frames. I bring to you the next big thing in Houston, Sky Trues, created by Golden Boy, the musician, the artist, the entrepreneur, and grassroots marketing genius. Be inspired, Sky Trues, custom designed frames. Sky Trues! Tired of wasting time threading needles? What would you do with more time? Would you spend it with family? Grow your business? Take a class or travel? There's a remarkable new tool available to help make your dream for more time a reality. The Easy Needle Multi-Threader was designed for weavers, seamstresses, and quilters to thread multiple needles in a fraction of the time than traditional methods. It eliminates tangles and prevents the possibility of germs and bacteria due to fallen needles and threads onto the floor. It's efficient, it's innovative, it's a time saver. Increase your productivity with Easy Needle Multi-Threader today.
right, welcome back to this edition of the Farrell Phelps Show with my awesome guest today, Mr. Sean McLemore. <laughs> Boy, the mess. Boy, the mess. Sean. Yo. Man, you are known for singing. <clears throat> I guess. <laughs> I guess. I believe. Yeah. Okay. I, you get that? Yeah, I get it. I read it. <laughs> that, <laughs> I read through that. That you are. You know, that you know what, Sean? It's, I just could not. It would be impossible for me to have you on the Feral Phelps show. Right here, right now. And not just ask you. You can cuss me out later. <laughs> And I just ask you to bless me with just a little sum of what you do, man. Just so the folk can just hear the man's voice. You know, and you know one of my favorite songs uh, is, is that I Believe. And uh, what you did a phenomenal job on that song uh, was on the charts for what, seven months? Or, uh, or 12 months. For 12 months. Number one, Number one for yes, 12 months. Yes, that's that's yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, and I would watch that video and kind of get jealous, you know. Uh, but everybody got their own gift. I can't sing, you know. But uh, Sean can tie it up. So uh, if you don't mind, brother, just just giving us a little something. And my sister happened to be in the house tonight too, and I, and she said she'll back you up, and she's a pretty phenomenal singer herself. Uh, but uh, you know, I just want you to give us something, man. Just bless us with a little something, if you don't mind. A little bit of that. All right, all right. Here we go. I'm believe. The family will get better. Yes, yes. And I believe hey. God will provide. I believe the promise that He made. Yes, yes. Oh, I believe it's already done. You know, and I and I and I know, and I, I, I just I don't want to push you or nothing because I know you got things you got to do, you know. But a but a rum. If there's another one, a little something, money, you can get on and bless it with a little something else if you want to, man. Cause you show them back, man. I don't know. I'm just saying. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I don't know. You so you got so much in you. Church, you know. Yes. I need hey, oh my Lord. Be all, oh Lord, I need thee. Yes. Yes. Every hour. Yes. Oh my Lord. I need thee. Yes. Yes. Oh bless me now, my Savior. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. I come. Glory. Yes. Oh, I come to. Right. Hallelujah. I come to thee. My Lord. My Lord. Uh, my Lord. Yeah. 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 I can't ask for no more than that. I can't ask for no more than that. Yeah. But, uh, man, thank, thank you so much yes. for letting us know that, Mr. Lord. Sean McLemore. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, man. All right, so what's next for Sean Macklemore? What's in the pipe for you, man? Um, actually, uh, coming up, well, I'm working on a single right now. I'm mm -hmm. in the studio doing that. Uh, hopefully to release that in next month. Okay. Uh, actually, uh, this week on Thursday, uh, the company D-Mars mm -hmm. uh, will be uh, honoring like 50 uh, black male entrepreneurs in okay. the city of Houston at the Hess Club on West Time. Yeah, uh, yeah. And I'm... One of those honorees. One of those honorees. Yeah, okay, okay. Which is a blessing. So, um, yes. doing that, and uh, I have a play that I'm doing called Family Affairs. Uh, where is that going to be? Uh, Daryl Wimbley is the producer of it. Okay. Uh, called Family and Family Affairs. It's going to be held at the Charles Bender Theater in Humble, okay. March the 17th. Okay. So, um, you know, just have some different things coming up, and uh, just trying to be successful yeah you know and uh I, by being by putting that reset on my life you know it's 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 been a challenge okay it's been a challenge so it's like walking by faith mm -hmm. you know it's like when you choose to walk by faith <clears throat> you're gonna know when it's time when it comes up on you yeah. Yeah. you know That's so right. uh uh just re you know resetting my life and uh you know 
success breeds involuntary loss. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's like mm -hmm. being successful, man, you're going to lose some people. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. See some people that you it haven't happens. seen in years, mm -hmm. you know, but you know, you know, when God is getting ready to bless you because your past start wanting you back. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm so, uh, I'm just trying to stay open, be positive, be successful, take care of my family, all keep right. it 100 at all times. And that's what you do. Yeah, do what God called me to do, man. There you go, go back to the authentic me. There you go. So I want to ask you, how do people uh, get in touch with Sean McElmore if somebody wants to reach out to you and find out about uh, the stage play and yeah. all this good stuff? How we do they go reach straight you? to Facebook and, you know, Sean McElmore. Facebook, okay. you can inbox me, however. You know, I handle my own business, all the middle man. All right. Yeah, so I handle my own <laughs> stuff. You know, because um, we can mess up sometimes with trying to have people to take care of your business in a certain area. Yeah. Because you want to inevitably bless the people. Mm -hmm. But when you get those numbers out there too far, you don't lost some people. You know what I'm saying? So okay. I just kind of handle my own business. Uh, uh, Instagram is Macklemore67. Macklemore sixty seven on Instagram. Twitter is Lamont Mac. Lamont Mac yeah. on Twitter. And, uh, so you can reach me through there. Okay. Uh, you can reach me through Fair. Whoever. You, know <laughs> uh, you can get my book on Amazon. You know, you can order it. Uh, it was. It came out as the best uh, top seller on Amazon for like two weeks. I was wow. really happy about that. So, yeah. the, book is, the book is. The book is endorsed through Donnie McClurkin and Yolanda Adams. So uh, they endorsed the book, and I'm happy about it. I'm know? happy about so, it too, and I'm really happy to see uh, this picture right here on the back. You did that. Mm, yeah, 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 yeah. I ain't get the front cover, I got the back cover. I'm going to take the back. I'm going to take the back. <laughs> Sean McLemore, thank you so much for joining Thanks me on this edition of the Farrell Phelps Show, man. You're an awesome guest, as Bless always. You. I appreciate you. Without any doubt. Uh, for more information on the show, you can certainly reach me at Let's Talk About It 12 TV at gmail.com. That's Let's Talk About It 12 TV at gmail.com. You can also go to my YouTube channel. Simply go to YouTube, type in the name Farrell Phelps, and a list of my shows are right there for your viewing pleasure. Until next time, folks, we'll see you then.